Hello and welcome to Michael and Ivanka's Grand Podcast, a weekly podcast where we figure out, we really just try and figure out what we think about everything. Um, this is episode 172. My name is Michael Forrest. And I'm Ivanka Magic. I heard a podcast um, this week where the guy gets, a, there's this like voiceover person to announce him each episode and says a little factoid about him. So if you've got a little factoid, what's your favourite snack? I don't know. Yogurt. My favourite snack is yogurt. My favourite snack is carrots. Oh. Virtue no. signalling at your face. And I'm yeah, gonna... yogurt's not my favourite <laughs> snack anyway. It's hummus. Yeah, it is. It's what? Moose. Hummus. 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 <laughs> Another goo. Um, this week we've uh, we've decided to talk about how it's too hot, and it's going to be all about freaking miserable stuff so you got that no, it isn't. it's not optimistic <laughs> it's really optimistic a, an optimistic look at what we can do about all of this and just we'll just have a bit of a talk about what's going on because i'm in milan where it's been getting hotter um and it's a, it's a very different sort of environment to uh try and you know work and do things in to london that's for sure and i'm going back tomorrow so this is the end of it thankfully but <laughs> Being too hot, and Ivanka's in Croatia, where it also it's hot. It is also hot and dry, very, very dry, dry, dry. But that's better, hot. right? Um, I don't. Well, it is for for uh, walking around, but not so good for your garden. Okay, I see. You see, but not humid though. No, not particularly humid. No. We had a weird humid week where there was sand from the Sahara, like oh, a yeah. horrible grey blanket. Not grey, sort of a ready grey blanket. It was very freaky. Yeah, sounded uh, but like... But that's um, gone now. <laughs> sounded like Mordor. Um, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. So, um, like, yeah, we'll just talk about how it's too hot. And obviously, mm. you know, some places are having much more serious problems with the heat. And um, let's just, you know, figure out what we're going to do about all this. So let's just go into the episode. <laughs> How is it going, Ivanka? What's the temperature there? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. I have no idea. It's in the 30s. Uh, but it's a, there's a pleasant northerly wind this morning. Did an 8K walk before 8K. breakfast. 8K. Uh, we went on a nice loop, me and um, Nick, because my mum's here, which means that we can leave the house and the child unattended. Well, you know, unattended right. by us. <laughs> uh, so we went off together, had a little walk. To the, it suits the dogs as well they can come home and then they they're calm for the rest of the day did that today and i have finished i finished my big contract on wednesday so yesterday i i went for an afternoon sleep and slept from like half one till four (laughs) it was lovely would you characterize that as a siesta oh absolutely Um. but i've been missing out on siestas you see the whole family go for a siesta and i've been working (laughs) is outrageous uh so yes so i i'm back to being able to live in a hot place because get up early do stuff go to sleep do stuff again in the afternoon evening so that was nice went out Mm. for dinner went for sushi found a sushi Mm. place on the island how is it 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 was good actually it was nice quite expensive but then we we had some expensive sushi this week it was good but flipping heck yeah 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 it was one of those well we won't do that too often <laughs> um the child lost an, another tooth fell out whilst in the restaurant it's always wow, exciting you never know which way that's gonna go horrific for <laughs> <It's like, laughs> all the other diners and uh yeah it's been a good week well i don't know if it's been a good week so it was a good day yesterday and it's the day today started off well how has your week <laughs> been fine. michael right well i'm going to tell you about well, we're we're going back to London tomorrow after six weeks here in Milano. So we had our um, our pre-flight COVID test yesterday, and I just wanted to like contrast the experiences we had. So um, we like it was like 
we went to this building and it was it was like this private health care facility and there were two people outside and they gave you they put the thermometer on your head and they gave you a ticket and you went in you went to the counter and they helped you sort of filling in all the forms and there's barcodes and stamps and registrations and passwords and then you um and then uh sort of went into a room with the the lady and she spoke to me in italian and i had to try and figure out how to uh, it was like on my own having to try and speak Italian. Oh no, my! How do I say that my partner has the passport? I need to go and get it. Uh, and like so, she could see that I was like, I said, I'm sorry, I don't, you know, I said, um, uh, I said sorry in Italian. I sort of said sorry, I'm English. I'm, my Italian's not great. Um, and then, but she was like, she she thought I was the cutest thing in the whole world as I <laughs> <laughs> sort of struggled to find my words. And then the actual test itself was a bit like she, you know, put your head back. Uh, solo la neza, uh, and she sort of went in, and then um, it was it was fine. It's not pleasant, but it was like I think it was about the 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 r- perfect balance of how unpleasant it needs to be. Um, and uh, then after she uh, says quindi ci minute, and then come back, go and have a coffee. Like I'm trying, to, I don't want to. I should say it in Italian, but and she was like, I capito. I'm like, si si si, quindi ci minuti. And she's like, oh, tu italiano, è molto bene. And um, I'm sort of like, okay. Uh. <laughs> but so we go for a coffee, come back. She gives you the res- we, we're negative by the way, and results are registered on the really. computer. You can download it in the app tomorrow. This was in stark contrast to the test that we got to leave, which was in um, sort of Notting Hill area, where we walked around, we found this sort of chemist, this pharmacy. We went in, we went, can we have this test? We thought it was going to be a hundred and something, and it was it was more, and like we got, but we realised we could get the different one. And then like the guy that was supposed to do it wasn't there. He was like, I'll be on. And then the other guy was like, oh no, I'll do it. And, and you go into this sort of like little room that just did not feel <laughs> sanitary like it just felt like this feels really sketchy and it's like, oh i'm not gonna i can't do it. this guy hardly didn't really speak english very well and he sort of like i had to do my own swab so i sort of like overdid it and then as we were waiting for the results this guy came in yelling about his prescription and then refused to pay for the prescription and then the guy behind the counter started swearing at him and and like yelling and, and it was this really hectic situation it was like complete the complete opposite of the military experience where we just sat in a nearby cafe and had a cappuccino and a croissant until we came back to this little pristine thing this was like oh my god someone's gonna get shot or stabbed or something in the next five minutes like his mask not on properly and oh my god but um either way that's done we've got our things we'll be flying tomorrow and uh yeah we'll be back in the uk um so that was fun um amazing and uh, yeah, and, and and the other, th- and I've just um, and I've been doing my interviews for um, with my shoot users. So I I talk to someone who does um, like paper craft stuff online and films that, and had a really good conversation with someone. And and she rec- said, I was, I was like, how did you learn how to do all this like mailing list? users workshops thing like kind of get this online business going and she told me about a couple of podcasts so i've just been like saturating myself in wall-to-wall like um smart passive income podcast and just like passive income it's you know like i mean technically i've got a passive income but like every week my numbers are like beyond my control and i'm starting to freak out because i think it really is on the decline now that the stuff i'm getting for free but that's why we've got to got to pick up my game and my focus i've been working on the new thing but then freaking out that it's another orthogonal thing where my focus is completely all over the place but anyway that's my week just a lot of um a lot of stuff and just being a bit too hot let's uh So, oh, that music was about to kick off and I <laughs> cut it off prematurely. It was about to be a good bit. Maybe we'll go back to it. Um, there were some spinny things from Rome as well, so uh, to spinny our one things. viewer. Um, right. It, it is too hot. I've, I'm just like, I've given up on not running the air conditioner while I'm working in here. I do, I turn it off and on, but like if I'm doing the podcast, my laptop gets too hot. My laptop can't yeah. handle the heat. Like I can just about handle it, but my laptop can't. Like that's annoying. Yeah. That is annoying. That's a problem. I uh, uh, I don't have aircon in the house. Mm. But you've got a well-constructed house. 
that works I've got better? Well in, yeah. How is it? I've got a well, well insulated house that uh, works a lot better. Fans make the, fan, the ceiling fan makes a huge difference. Mm. We sleep very well at night. I don't have any problems with heat at night. Mm. I've just not quite got the bit outside my office. The greenery hasn't grown big enough right, yet. Okay. I need it to be a deeper shade because <laughs> then, uh, so that's, you know, I'm not quite, you know, I'm still refining. Hmm. Um, but yes, working so, in an office with computers hmm. is not, it, it's tricky, I it think, hot. in this heat. And, yeah. and also challenge one of it being really hot and bright outside is that you find yourself sitting in the dark. <laughs> Because yeah. you've got to like shade everything down. I'm like, and now I've got like like two, like three lights on just so that I'm lit for the podcast. But I've got the yeah. air conditioning going because otherwise my laptop overheats and my video starts chopping out and the stream starts going wrong. And um, it's just uh, it's this weird thing where you feel like oh, there's energy coming in. Why? I'm, but I'm not using that energy to power anything, and I'm just blocking it out. And like I should really have some. This should all be solar. Like I'm really yeah. missing a trick here. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, mm. But that's the uh, that's but that was my uh, good news conversation this mm. morning. I was talking to, as you know, uh, our regular listeners will know that I did a contract to get solar panels fitted to that house in end of January. Right. We're now July, and uh, I had to. I made a phone call. So Croatian customer service means that nobody really tells you anything because mm. you know they don't want to inconvenience themselves by providing any sort of customer service. Uh, so you have to chase them. So I phoned up yesterday morning and was like, look, people, this mm. is not OK. You need to tell me what's going on. I'm not wait. Anyway, I was I was sufficiently polite yet forceful, uh, which that me- it meant that I did actually get a phone call back telling me that, no, they still hadn't heard from the electricity board with mm. the piece of paper that said, yes, you may have solar panels. Mm. Um, and then I so I phoned up my Again, this is a country where if you don't know somebody, nothing works. So I have I've activated my people I know, and uh, they I sent them an email immediately yesterday. And then this morning I got a phone call going, "Look, you're basically trailblazing. Mm. The local electricity board knows that they're supposed to do this, but no one's asked them to do it before, and they don't really know how. And they need something and some piece of paper, and somebody's got to you know put a stamp on it. And you're basically creating a pro- forcing them to create a process." for a mm. requirement it's like you know we've never had a freedom of information request so therefore we don't know how to deliver one or something yeah. do you know what I mean it's that kind of so um so I actually weirdly even though I'm no closer to having solar panels I actually felt pleasantly reassured by the I felt, felt, mm. felt somewhat lifted because the people doing the activating for me are also now looking into getting solar panels because they're like right. actually because there's this kind of myth that doing a lot of these things is going to be re- not worth it. It's not worth mm. it. Why would you get sold upon? Oh, it's not worth it. You know, it takes you years to make your money back, and mm. it's a lot of work, and it's just not worth it. That's Croatian mythology. Mm. Uh, yeah, mythology is the right word. But so by actually doing it, I feel like I'm amplifying myself <laughs> beyond just sticking so You know, yeah. so beyond just having clean energy for my house, I'm also sort of being able to have conversations with people that otherwise I wouldn't be having. Yeah. And, you know, even the people I found up yesterday, I was like, look, these solar panels are really important to me. I'm not just doing it for a laugh. <laughs> like, I want the solar yeah. panels. If I'd have, like, I chose you because you're supposed to be able to do this and you're supposed to be a proper European firm. So mm-hmm. do it. So, yes, so solar panels is, uh, that's my little bit of weird random climate activism. Hmm in my village do you think um the fact that we're eldest siblings makes us particularly suited to trailblazing this sort of thing <laughs> maybe <laughs> it's a good question it's like first one to go out first one to negotiate curfews first one to negotiate solar panels so we had to um, deal with a lot of unknowns no. and then everyone else just copies and you're like oh, yeah. well. and, yeah, and pe- gets to have a yeah. better time <laughs> Or, or parents work out what's worth the bother of trying to enforce and what isn't. Hmm. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. But it is, yeah, I think. Uh, it, but in a week where, like, I think, that, you know, you and I are talking about the, the heat in a, yeah, in a we European are. kind of like where we are. But uh, the Canada. news of the heat is not good. Canada is really got, like, record the hottest 
the hottest temperatures on record. It's not good. It's, it's not it's, good at all. It's one of these things like you. The, I think the architecture of a place is sort of grows from the normal climate there and so if you're in Spain you've got like a nice white house that reflects loads of sunlight but I always get annoyed in London that people uh, it's like it's only going to get hotter so if you sort of act like oh it's only going to get hot for like two weeks of the year so it's not worth doing anything but then you see like what happens if you just ignore the reality that things are going to get hot people actually are dying so that's yeah, um, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. British Columbia, people are dying. Sudden deaths has tripled the usual number. Like, because it's just because also this idea that when it gets really hot, you can continue to live and work the way you do. I mean, it, my mum's visiting, and she she hates walking. She has mm. hated walking her whole life. Okay, <laughs> and so and when she walks with me, as a rule, I am being told off for walking too fast and okay. marching. But in the summer here, I'm like, mother, slow down. We <laughs> can't walk at this speed. We need to, you know, the aim is to get to the shop without sweating. Right. <laughs> so how slowly <laughs> we need to walk is, you know, it, we need to adapt. We can't keep marching as if, I mean, even my walk this morning, 8K walk took us two hours. Right. Well, know, okay. That's not, that's not my speed, mm. but it works. I arrived home without a headache, without heat stroke, <laughs> without <laughs> I did also leave at quarter to six this morning. Oof. But you know what I mean? It's like, um, I think this, you, like, adapting to the environment around you rather than trying to fight it is yeah. an important element of, of living anyway. But living in a changing climate, 100%. Got to well, let's imagine, I mean, do we need everyone to start tearing down their uh, <laughs> buildings and replacing them with ones that can withstand more heat? Like you get into this kind of like infrastructure problem where if you, if you're sort of applying air conditioning to a building or solar panels even or whatever you're applying like to a yeah. building after it's already been built with a different climate in mind, it's it's never going to work quite as well as if you replace. But then like, I, are we just going to assume that we should probably like sort all this stuff out? I, I think though, insulation is insulation, and it mm. works when it's cold and it works when it's hot. Yeah. And really, a lot of the climate change is about new extremes of weather so it's not we can't just bank on the fact that our summers are going to get hotter mm. we can also you know anticipate our winters getting colder and freak storms and, we, and the water one is tricky i think mm. uh, flooding but yeah. like i think there's a lot of things if we, just by by fitting insulation i remember i was re i went to a talk caroline lucas did in brighton one time and she was talking about like you know after the second world, she was drawing parallels to after the second world war um, you know the nh creating the nhs also created jobs mm. and we've talked about this in anyway but like if we just had a load of people going around fitting insulation to existing buildings mm. it would create jobs save energy yeah. save on um uh, save the carbon footprint make places more pleasant to live in i mean our house in brighton is a pain uh, more from a like in our loft it's hard to sleep there in the summer because mm. we don't have adequate uh, it's good enough for a, a a temperate climate it's not good enough when there's a heat wave mm. so it just becomes ridiculous and that's a you know that i would that was lack of forethought on my part i'd say or our well, part it's a uh, Green New Deal is something yeah. that it would be lovely to have because, but you know, the uh, the, the entrepreneurs aren't going to build uh, insulation firms because it's just not profitable and the invisible hand of the market knows everything and it's fine. Um, I'm, Sharon's put a comment in chat. <laughs> I need to like translate into a way that, that, that um, goes into my policy of not like make putting something on the podcast that I would be upset if the person it was about found but we do have we do share a house with a building with someone that is prone to uh leaving the um just the front door open when it's too hot and my bike's just there and it's like thanks <laughs> thanks for doing that um and she says retrofitting was a huge deal when she was working for the building charity as well so don't know I think retrofitting work. I mean, this house is—it's all been retrofitted mm. to. It was built, you know, in the 80s, 
um, and it's you know a concrete. We bought a, a concrete shell, yeah. and just added stuff to the outside of it. Hmm. You know, it's which is you you know it'd be hard to do the the. We've talked about yeah, I, I, but it's it's amazing. <laughs> I am constantly amazed by how well it works. Yeah, uh, but it does rely on you also. As soon as the sun comes on the house, on the subject of living in the dark, mm. you've got to get up, close the shutters, close the windows, yeah. not let the the light in. Yeah, um, but you it's know. a bit of a weird situation. I'm going to clip. So much of, because I'm, you know, a software engineer, so much of how I look at this, whether it's politics, well, not politics, but like infrastructure, but um, it all comes through this lens of engineering where um, it's uh, like this thing of do you, if your sort of under foundations or initial assumptions are wrong and then you build something and then you just end up with something that you just, it just becomes this... Um, this mess of hacks upon hacks upon hacks. And yeah. That's why human beings are so awkward because well, that's how DNA writes its code. Um, and then, but it's like, how do you, like, th- there's this, and then as an engineer, like, and it, obviously it's easier with code to do this than with a building. It's like, there's always this tendency to want to, like, throw everything out and start again. But you never end up with something that, you know, you just end up with different problems and sometimes you yeah, just yeah, sort of yeah. need to work with what you've got sometimes and stop like yeah. going, oh no, I need to change yeah, everything yeah, yeah, and then yeah. it will be fine. Like the technical debt conversation. Yeah. Oh, we've got so much technical debt, we can't possibly make any new features. We need to re-platform. And then it's like, when we re-platform, do we just build the same thing that we had before with the new thing or do we actually take this as an opportunity to actually look at what the thing does and mm. yeah this there is a I have, technical debt is a nice way of talk there is a lot of technical debt in the world of things there of is. expectation never mind even the physical buildings and stuff but the expectations of how we can live mm. is also a bit yeah messed up we, like you need these bio bio flats <laughs> with bio <laughs> made of trees and mushroom matter and all that kind of thing don't we um, why is everything everyone loves concrete is amazing like it's a liquid it that turn, you can just pour the liquid in and then it becomes a solid that you can live in do you yeah. think um, oh, I don't know Les, do you want to have a bre- like is 3D printing buildings going to fix everything <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anything's going to fix any one thing is going to fix everything no, no, I think uh, on, on a random concrete conversation I used to uh, when I, you've just reminded me, when I was a young teenager, I used to do English tutoring for a professor of concrete. <laughs> mm. So I used to go and see him once a week so he could practice his English. And I used to translate uh, huge numbers of papers about concrete, <laughs> academic okay. papers. So I know so quite a lot, expert. but I don't know, <laughs> randomly know stuff about concrete and <laughs> how quickly it deteriorates and random stuff anyway uh yeah (laughs) but yes i think the thing is we're all looking for this magic and it is everyone just wants a magic oh do you know what we'll do this and everything will be all right and there Mm. is no one let's do this and everything will be all right what like but unless we accept that we need to do stuff and lots of it and you know solar panels um my fancy new yogurt maker that i bought this morning (laughs) because we have a we have a constant like uh, it's very awkward to recycle around here. It's very mm. and that one of our biggest things that we've got no choice of, of vessel that it arrives in is yogurt, right? Or this plastic, yeah. and uh, so I've bought a yogurt maker now. A yogurt uh, maker. So we'll see. We'll Listen see up, what Shaz. that does to. It's possible <laughs> to make yogurt. <laughs> and it, you can buy different cultures. You can actually make vegan yogurt with it, apparently. But I'm going for cow yogurt. But at the moment, um, so you know, there's lots of little things. The, the, this idea that, and, and you need to, you can't just be really brilliant in one bit of your life. Yay! I live in a mushroom house. Sorted. Yeah. You know, there's like. I'm going to go um, on twenty flights a year. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> to tell it's people like, about my mushroom house. 
<laughs> I mean, I mean, we were in a in a we were driving around the island in our car, burning fuel the other day, mm. and my mum go. We were looking in this place on the other part of the island is building a new hotel, and my mum was looking at it. She goes, "You seem very confident that we're going to go back to mass travel," mm. and uh, and she was like, "I just can't see, you know, po- with pandemic stuff." It's like pandemic plus climate. She's like, okay, once a year, go on a holiday. Mm. But can we go back to four flights a year just for your holidays? Or just for work. Like, yeah, yeah. Ten flights a year for work. Like, that's so much travel that 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 you don't need to do. I think I could, I'd have to be it. I don't think any eco adjustments I'll make for the rest of my life are going to make up for all the flights I've done for work. To be honest, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I've done like I've been literally around one trip. I was like New York for ten days, Hong Kong, and back again. So I went all the way around. <laughs> I mean, it's insane. But anyway, it is so. insane. Okay, well that's good. That's good. I can go on a trip. I looked at how to, flying to Hong Kong, and uh, they've got some uh, strict COVID regulations <laughs> for people okay. coming from England. <laughs> <laughs> like you've got to do 21 days in a hotel quarantine 21 days yeah so basically you're not coming for a few days no when when are they going to do like when does will it start being valid you know if you've got double vaccines covid passports and all that i saw yeah. that some of the eu's not approved the indian making of the astrazeneca so i don't think i've got so it's the, 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 the what you were saying about like the covid um uh what's the word nationalism or whatever mm. <laughs> like yeah, vaccine yeah, yeah, yeah. nationalism that's uh i don't know we're just gonna get these weird things um uh what was i gonna say uh, i was gonna i don't know <laughs> what are you gonna say i don't know like is it too, it's just it's, it's a hard subject to really keep going <laughs> it's too hot um, and the, yeah. the fact that it's uh so banksy sold that thing didn't he of that there's a mountain Banksy painting of Washington Washington's Mount Rainier which offers brutal critique of the climate cells for 6.3 million so obviously like everyone subject to a limited period only is written on the bottom when there's a mountain that is going to melt in the background um so it's it's like and I think like it's pretty I don't know I feel like it's been this climate stuff has been mainstream for it's like 40 years everybody like knows years, Ev- like everyone. Yeah. <laughs> everyone it's like being out at a pub with your friend and everyone knows that they've drunk too much mm. and they need to be taken home and nobody's actually taking them home it's like come on mate and it's you've, like they're just like they're, you've had enough <laughs> and it's almost like uh, okay i'm gonna do this i'm gonna have a good time and then it's like this disconnect between the fact that you're gonna pay for it the next day by not being able yeah. to do anything or the next two days if you get older like it's just you just it's so addicted yeah. to doing the thing like the drinking 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 that you just can't even it, it just kind of clouds yeah. out the, the costs and and it's those secondary effects of climate change the sort of like re, like refugees climate refugees and all that kind of thing that are just and that have these secondary knock-on like yeah. the fueling the right-wing agenda by you know yeah. you've got all this you know people coming from all over the place now because of the rampant you know short-termist capitalism that's been going on and it's even like it's like get somebody else though in this whole if the drinking scenario somebody else is having to have your hangover and miss work like you if many of us it's not even us that are the ones directly yeah, that are going to be interesting like with drinking we'll do it even though it's we that is going to directly suffer the next day but when you're not going to directly suffer and I and it did like I said last week, like looking at the show your stripes, like um, it did seem like yeah. sort of some places are having a lot more visible effect of climate change than in a lot of the plate centres of all this consumption. So like yeah, yeah, American yeah, exactly. places and yeah, yeah, yeah. And UK, I mean, like you're not seeing it as badly. Twi- I've, I've, I, you know, sometimes I dip into sort of the American internet and things like. What we've I'm sure I've said this on the podcast that but it's 2021 and there's places where hanging your washing outside on a line seems to be controversial in America <laughs> seems to be like whole you know instead of using a dryer ten- yeah it's like it's like the a sort of a controversial mess I don't know what the 
I really don't yeah. know what the logic is. But it's like this controlling the environment, picket fences, making it, you know, our neighbourhood look a certain way. And therefore, you can't hang your washing up in your own garden. I mean... I, I was gonna I was gonna mention the suburbs um because I saw this video about like how that whole thing is like the whole suburbs are just they're they're funded by the cities and their infrastructure is completely unsustainable like it's the, the roads and in America all these roads are just going to hell because they sort of built them but they're, they're not generating money for the suburbs the suburbs are, because it's all just residential it's not generating any any income so it's just like the city has to pay for it and and then that means that taxes are disproportionately going to these white people in the suburbs and not getting used to you know sort of rebuild infrastructure it's it's that the, the whole short termist weird thing but also i heard that the trellick tower guy um the guy that designed trellick tower had a whole thing against people hanging their washing out the window so in the kind of side bit there's the laundry facilities but like the idea of like unnecessarily using a dryer to me is oof. Jesus, yeah, don't yeah, do right. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I doing? don't even have a dry in Brighton. <laughs> it's like, uh, I've got space for one in that house, but you know. But yeah, but yeah, it's like it's that is, but that's the kind of thing unnecessarily doing something. It's like that that um, that per, I've met, I've mentioned this before. The person I know who's, who's changed their Twitter handle mm. it to uh, is that okay given the climate emergency? <laughs> yeah. And I have it on a post it above my desk. Actually, it's a good thing. It's like what you're doing now is that okay given <laughs> given that there's a climate emergency? <laughs> Uh, you know, it's like it's just a stop and think a minute and mm. think about what, 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 whether that thing you really need that thing you're about to buy. Mm. Or, you know, it just doesn't. Yeah. yeah. La, la. Let's have a let's have a F seven. Oh, oh, it's so hot, isn't it? So oh. hot, isn't it? Do you know what's nice, though, when it's hot? Do you what? know what's nice? Living by the sea. Oh, it's lovely. I bet it is. Milan's <laughs> not by the sea. But we do well, have yeah. a balcony, and I'm going to miss the balcony. I'm going to miss going out in the morning and just sitting and just going, ah, some sun. And I'm going to go back to just sitting, being indoors all the time and, like, trying to, like, awkwardly lean out of our window. And then it's only, like, it's, like, it's, like, not that warm and screw it there was there was the time when we were here it's, it's i think it's getting less humid here which apparently makes it a bit more bearable i think it's when it was humid and even if it's like 29 it's like uh, and you just can't think but um uh, 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 uh what was I, I it gave me that like summer holiday feeling it gave me that like i'm i'm somewhere nice away from where i'm normally yeah, yeah, i yeah, quite like yeah. that smell of humidity sometimes but it's not very conducive yeah. to working or something no um, we uh yeah i do yesterday i went um i've quite i asked my daughter if she wanted to make a to-do list for the summer mm. of what things we should get done while mummy's not working so much and we're hanging mm. out together and she went i'd like to swim and swim and swim mm -hmm. <laughs> and swim and then at some point maybe at number seven she threw me in an ice cream and at some point a bit later there was a paddleboard but mostly okay. it was to do with swimming and it is nice i mean that is one of the i'm really uh, up on, for, a, on a jolly i know <laughs> i really want to do a bit of swimming in something because I'm, I'm addicted to the cold showers but i can't get a sufficiently cold shower here anymore oh it's like, no it's just where's like, me for the same reason, I'm having cold showers because the water's warm enough. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't really count. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, you're not getting that <laughs> feeling where your feet go numb. Like, in Rome, it was I was able to have, like, a properly cold shower, and it was like, oh, yeah, that's the ticket. But um, now I'm back to, like, it's kind of cold. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. really count. Tep tepid tap water. But I think yeah. I've got to be good at jumping into cold water at this point. Like, I'm that octopus friend guy. Did you see that, my octopus friend? Yes, yes. Oh yeah, I think we talked about it. That was he was said he was addicted, getting sort of addicted, started to crave the cold water. I'm like, yeah, I know what you mean. I want it. it makes me feel awake and alive. Uh, <laughs> but I remember, like, when I was in Morocco and it was like forty degrees. That was like the hottest it's ever. Like I was sort of on the edge of the safari, the safara, the Sahara <laughs> Desert, the safari. 
yeah. browser. Um, on the edge of the Sahara <laughs> Desert, uh, like in this little kind of guest house, and it was forty degrees, and there was there was no way you were thinking about anything. You just had to no. sort of mong out all day. Uh, yeah, yeah. But the one time, like, I was just thinking about this the other day. Like, the time sort of t- I was like really the only person staying there for a lot of it because I think I chose a bad time when it maybe it was forty five degrees even, and um. He sort of, the, the, one of the people sort of drove me to the a nearby swimming pool, which was part of another guest house or something. It felt a bit weird, but I just went and had a swim while he sort of sat on the edge, weirdly. <laughs> so I'm just having a swim. I'll, I guess I'll do some lengths. Yeah, this is fun. But it was like, it was amazing just like, going in some water. Like it was, it was an amazing, it was like, I would have loved to have gone swimming a lot more if it just hadn't been this weirdo experience. Um, we, but yeah, by the sea it seems like a good place to be when it's like that. Cause, oh, yeah, yes. we, yeah. Well, I went to school in Mostar in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Mostar gets famously hot in the summer because mm. it's kind of in a, it's surrounded by hills and it just sort of warms up like a cauldron. And mm. it, even, I don't know, when I was 13, 14, it'd be 42 degrees sometimes. But school stops early because you cannot expect people to go to school. And it's 42, when it's 42 degrees, you can. <laughs> You, you when you say mong, you basically pass out. Yeah. You've got to lie down in a dark room and try not to move or work, use any energy. <laughs> it's just too too hot to to be. But you know, one thing that in uh, Herzegovina, where my family are from, we're near rivers, yeah. and that that's the other. You know, you just spend your whole time, and that stays icy cold even Does in it? summer. Mm, slightly. <laughs> is it enjoyable uh, or is it yeah. unpleasant? No, no, it's enjoyable. Right. I mean, we found a beach here that not many, a wild beach that not many locals go to because it has freshwater sources under mm. the sea and it, right. the sea temperature stays really low and locals won't really go in the sea until it's like right. 22, 23, 24 degrees C. Mm. Whereas over, I don't know what the temperature is over there, but it's proper with bracing, <laughs> <laughs> even on a really hot day. And then, and people, you can see them, they rock up because it's a beautiful beach. They, they're like, oh, wow, amazing beach. Mm. And they get in the water. It's like, ah! <laughs> and then mm. they go away. And it's like, yes, another one's gone. It is funny. Like, you can talk, you can think of this in terms of routine. And definitely, I, I'm sort of struggling with the fact that there is a different routine in Milan. But I'm, I've still sort of brought my existing London routines with me. So I'm just like, when they involve food, it just means I'm doing twice as much food as I was before. Oh, because yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> you eat late because in the afternoon, like, it's, it's still... It, yeah it's yeah, like yeah, so hot yeah, in the yeah. day and you should probably have a nap in the afternoon but i just want to like yeah. i like my i like my well that, that's the thing it's like if you like your i want to start i want to be at my desk at nine and work solidly till six and i'll have a snack in the morning i'll have lunch and then i'll eat at six kind of thing um you you can by trying to hold on to that that industrial routine yeah. that's when you blast the air conditioner all day whereas yeah. probably what i should do is like work in the morning when it's okay then have a break for like the hottest part of the afternoon and then go yeah. back to work in the evening and then have dinner and like change my routine to fit my environment but that it's hard to change your routine um but i guess more of us are gonna have to start have to, figuring yeah, that out like, and it, uh, yeah I, yeah that's what i think i think nick struggles with that sort of stuff he likes he's very like this is how i live my life mm. it's like well you can't. <laughs> and so it's like, it doesn't so work. Here. Yeah, it doesn't work. So he stopped doing. Last summer, he learned that you can't do DIY all summer, for example. Yeah. Like, because you know, and like you say, you can do. I I have definitely taken to getting up and doing computer from six to nine. Yeah. And then you know, do it get because it's beautiful and fresh and cool. Mm. And then, and the office doesn't get. It, yeah. So yeah, I think adapting do, is we hard, guess, but we, yeah, yeah, we've we've got so used to this idea that we have this total supremacy over our environment that we don't have to care about what it's like outside our walls. Um, it's yeah. it that's that's very damaging <laughs> and unsustainable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just thinking about it though, like in winter as well, you, you sort of like you kind of don't. I don't struggle working in winter particularly, except that some days you just feel like you've been in the dark all day. Mm. That's the other thing about. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Actually, really, we should only be working, working in this definition that we've invented in this twenty first. You know, since yeah, yeah. the industrial revolution, we should only be doing that maybe in spring and autumn. Right. And then the rest of the time, we should just be like, just making sure everything's ticking over. You know, 
a few hours here, a few hours mm. there. In the winter, make sure you go outside for some daylight. In the summer, make sure you stay inside for some coolness. You know, what is this obsession with 365 days a year? Yeah, it's all got to be the same. Like, and, it's, and there is a there's sort of a globalization aspect to all this, but you still like there's time zones. So it's not like if we all work at the same time of day everywhere all over the world, that that's going to help because you still got to deal with the fact that people are getting yeah, up yeah. at different times. And oh, well, they're, they're just like, oh, wait, you know, that sun yeah, is yeah. out at different times. So, yeah. And, it, you know, in the winter, I don't really like getting up early and doing exercise. There's no way I'm getting up at half five it's to go for a walk. It's a big room, isn't it, when it's freezing, when it's not but light But in the yet. summer, delighted. I'm like, yeah. It's light, it's cool. Oh, I'm going to go outside. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to play this last clip. Um, the worst thing about it being too hot is that the kind of music I like doesn't make sense when it's hot. I think music is sort of like kind of what? quite intertwined with the environment. Like if you, yeah. I you think, can, you know, reggae when it's summer. Uh, like that's the one thing I was like, I couldn't live here in Thailand because all the music is it's like Bob Marley all day, every day. And like I, I like freaking break core harsh stuff that only makes sense in Berlin and East London and, like, <laughs> and I'm not going to be able to listen to the music I like anymore because it's too nice well, here I, I love that idea though that the, I've not thought about it at all because I, I talk to some, I was talking to somebody recently about you know do you feel like you belong like the difference between some ah can't finish my yeah. sentence Sometimes when you travel, mm. when one travels, one tries to bring some of home with them. Yeah. Tea bags, uh, I don't know, whatever it might be yeah. that you're into. I'm not a tea drinker, but many people travel with in proper tea bags. Mm. Um, uh, but I do like Marmite delivered yeah. wherever I live, that okay. kind of thing. So you have your, you have your things that are, don't, but they don't really belong to where you are. They belong to where you've come from or mm. where you've been. And it's like trying to make where you are be the right place to drink a cup of English tea or, or you know, uh, <laughs> you know go for it. it's quite an, uh, but I'd never thought I'd only thought about it in, per, in terms of food I'd never mm. thought about it in terms of music <laughs> yeah. but it's true it's like art oh, loads of things are different depending on where you are and appropriate or not well, I yeah. It. It's, well, it's just like the, the the relationship between music and architecture is quite close. Like, yeah. you need a certain sort of building for club music. You need a certain sort of building for hymns and church music. You need a certain sort of, you know, headphones make sense for Billy Eilish. I, I like saying Billy Eilish, um, and <laughs> etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, but then it's like the weather. Then is another factor in that architecture, which you know, so it all kind of like mm. is all connected, really. But the yeah, idea of yeah. like bring you know people do bring stuff from where they come but then they mix in and we get like yeah. uh, the chicken yeah, yeah. tikka masala and all that. Some kind of, of it's thing. brilliant, yeah. but you know, but you can't force it. Yeah, and I'm I'm you still drinking hot cups of coffee all day. And it's like, what are you doing, yeah, Michael? Yeah. Come on, get, make peace with the idea of cold coffee. Ugh, cold coffee. Ugh. <laughs> my mum spent. We spent a long time in. Uh, when we lived in Hedgesco, mum trying to get things like gooseberry bushes and rhubarb to grow. And uh, it was just not, uh, you know, like some things, trying to grow things in the wrong place <laughs> like. is, is a good <laughs> lesson. It's a good lesson. It's like, yeah, maybe you could get it to work, but mm. it's a lot of what is just not worth it. But I would love to be able to grow, like, I would like to live somewhere hot just to be able to grow a mango. I'd love yeah. to grow a mango. I'll tell you what, though, I have been, um, I because in Italy, that all the produce is just big compared to the uk <laughs> so instead of buying mangoes i've just been getting these italian apples that are like twice the size of an english of an apple you get in the uk they just they just grow these the peppers are enormous everything's just bigger like because i think they've just got so much sun and you know like yeah 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 so yeah. it's cool um but yeah so i'd love to just live somewhere i could grow my own mangoes and then like we'll figure out as long as i live in a house that was designed for the environment then i'm sure it'll be fine i can yeah. adjust my I schedule mean, i've got a problem this year with my tomatoes michael mm -hmm. i've tried to grow big tomatoes right and from herzegovina mm -hmm. where it where the temperature is the same but there's a lot more water right 
and they just are they looking just like up. they're just looking right miserable. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. But my cherry tomatoes they're looking fan fan dabby dozy. Okay, say, but yeah. Thanks for listening. Well, there we go, that's the podcast. <laughs> I'm gonna play the titles. <laughs> Thanks for listening. If you liked this podcast, why don't you go to grandpodcast.com. Make sure you subscribe to your new podcast app of choice if you like. If you want to support it, we've got Patreon, patreon.com slash grandpodcast. Uh, we'll, we're not going to send you a mug anymore. Sorry, everyone, you missed the boat on that, so forget you. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, Slack, you can join. Um, videos are out. You get video episodes. You can see where we are. You can see the little video snippets I make. All that kind of thing. Where can people find you on the internet? Ivanka? People can find me at Ivanka on Twitter. You can find me at michaelforestmusic.com. You can find me at goodtohear.co.uk. And you can find me at the burgeoning squares.tv. And you can also use my app, dungood.app. And I'm just making so much stuff and promoting none of it, which is why I will never own a Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. So, uh, I mean, Ivanka's going to start work on this whole uh, program soon, even though yeah, yeah, I am. she's not allowed to work because that's against the rules, but she's allowed to think about it. Yeah, that I her am. mind is opened. Um, with that, we'll just <laughs> see you next week, and I'll be back in boring old London. So, take care, have a good one, and don't die from the heat, please. Bye. <laughs> bye. 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 bye, bye, bye. bye.